and Eric had a fair amount more text and said, skip it, yeah. uh, because I have a fair amount of text myself. Um, but before I get started, I want to make sure that I welcome my wife and my daughter here tonight, and I'm just delighted to have both of them here, and let's, let's get them started. Fiona, when she came, her, her primary interest was to ask, is there any cake? Uh, and, and there it is, and, and hopefully we'll have some uh, uh, sweets after the speech as well, and a chance for us to talk a little bit more. Um, but good evening. Um, with the City Council and our entire organization, it's my pleasure to welcome you to this year's State of the City Address. Before I get started, I want to thank our sponsors. Kaiser Permanente, Wells Fargo, AC Transit, Madrona Costa, Kindred Hospital, and the Chamber of Commerce. I also want to thank other elected officials, businesses, community members, board and commission members, volunteers, our city staff, and most of all, our San Diego residents and my family. I welcome my city colleagues, Vice Mayor Jim Crowley, Council Members Pauline Cutter, Michael Gregory, Benny Lee, Ursula Reed and Diana Souza to tonight's meeting. Um, and I thank them for their hard work and efforts throughout the year to keep San Leandro moving forward. I also wish to recognize other elected officials that represent San Leandro and thank them for their service to our community, including Supervisor Rowan Chan, our Congresswoman Barbara Lee, and State Representatives Ellen Corbett, Lonnie Hancock, and Assemblymember Rob Bonta. And I'd like to recognize our bar directors, Rebecca Salzman and Robert Baker, AC Transit Directors, Elsa Ortiz and Mark Williams, East Bay Municipal Utility Director, Frank Millen, East Bay Parks Director, Doug Seiden, our City Manager, Chris Zapata, and City Staff, and in particular, I'd like to thank Yolanda Crosco and Eric Engelbart for their work in helping present, to, helping put together tonight's speech and the PowerPoint presentation. Well, I'm delighted to say that the state of San Leandro is strong. 2013 was a year of tremendous progress for our city. One gauge of the progress of the city is property values. Over the past two years, only two cities in Alameda County have seen assessed values other properties increased by over 10%. I'm pleased to report that San Leandro is amongst these top two performers, with values increasing by 11.45% during this period of time. Today, the assessed value of all properties in San Leandro stands at an all-time high for our city, at $10.8 billion. What does this mean in practical terms for San Leandros? Well, far less homeowners are under water on mortgages than they were three years ago. More San Leandrans can qualify for refinancing, reducing their monthly mortgage payments and putting more money in their pockets to buy goods and services from San Leandro merchants. But there are other ways, of course, we can measure the progress of a city. And I will highlight many of those tonight. Taken together, I believe that every person here this evening will conclude that San Leandro is a city on the move. We have made tremendous progress but that's not all. The work of the City Council and all members of the city organization have undertaken over the past three years, combined with your efforts and that of other elected officials and representatives, has set the stage for 2014 being a transformative year for San Leandro. Imagine our city as a kettle of water. We put the kettle on the stove and light the flame. Then the water temperature starts to increase, well this year, the water temperature is going to boil. It's coming. In a matter of months, the kettle will be whistling loudly. That's what's happening here in San Leandro. How did this occur? It all starts with a vision that's linked to specific goals that when achieved, bring the vision to life. Our vision for San Leandro is to be one of the best places in the Bay Area to live, work, and raise a family. Included in this vision is a city that's safe, tolerant, vibrant, innovative, celebrates its brilliant diversity, and cares for the most vulnerable, our children, our seniors, and the needy. 
working with my council colleagues, we have created specific goals that guide the entire city organization. These goals are linked to our assets of location, innovation, jobs, safety, civic pride, and commitment to education. San Leandro has a world-class location in the San Francisco Bay Area, right in the middle of America and the world's economic engines, I'm sorry, innovation engines, Silicon Valley and San Francisco. Yet is San Leandro truly part of the San Francisco Bay Area innovation economy? In one word, yes. We have a remarkable collection of companies in our city across a wide range of industries, all working to enhance their performance by embracing new technologies and processes. But when one focuses solely on venture capital funding, it's a different answer. Across America, $29 billion in venture capital funding was invested in companies last year, with a staggering $11.5 billion, or 40% of the sum, invested in Bay Area companies. How much of this money came to San Leandro in 2013? I don't know the answer, but it may be close to zero. That's the past. The future will be different. At City Hall, we are determined to assist both long-standing and new San Leandro businesses divert for themselves a portion of the pipeline of venture capital and other investment dollars flowing into San Francisco and Silicon Valley so that our local businesses can thrive and grow in a highly competitive environment. Lit San Leandro, our high-speed fiber optic network that was launched in partnership with Dr. Patrick Kennedy, has been the high-octane gas fueling the acceleration of San Leandro's innovation engine. A year ago, the chairman of the Federal Communications Commission came to San Leandro and hailed Lit San Leandro as a model for cities nationwide that wanted to develop their own broadband networks. Today, over 100 local businesses occupying 3 million square feet of buildings, including our two major malls, are connected to the fast fiber, giving them efficiency and a competitive business advantage. We will complete an additional seven miles of the fiber loop with our $2.1 million grant from the Federal Economic Development Administration later this year. This 18-mile loop will help San Diego businesses become industry leaders, revitalizing our industrial core, and creating hundreds, and eventually thousands, of new quality jobs. And the loop is not just for businesses. Our libraries are connected, and we will soon be connected with the Boys and Girls Club of San Diego, as well as our public schools. We intend also to bring high-speed, free public Wi-Fi to our downtown. Also this year, oh, I'm sorry, also last year, Governor Jerry Brown came to San Leandro and proclaimed the Net Zero Energy Building and the Trade Center as, quote, the wave of the future, unquote. He said it's a model for how economic progress can work for businesses, workers, and the environment, not just one at the expense of the other two. I fully agree. A fac the facility offers a blueprint for San Leandro's future, a partnership between business and labor utilizing the latest technology. The renovation and repurposing of a largely vacant industrial site into a thriving new property. And a recognition of the need to conserve energy, all in a building that is visually striking. Coming this year is one of the most exciting projects of all. The Westlake Technology Campus, next to the San Leandro Bar Station. This project marries location, innovation, investment, and smart growth. Three six-story buildings with Class A office space are planned, with the first slate for completion in early 2016. This project will be a significant job generator for the city and the region. In the short term, scores of construction jobs will be created. In the long term, there will be hundreds, if not thousands, of new employees working in San Leandro. And these will not just be new employees, there will also be new customers for our downtown shops and restaurants and dealerships along Auto Road. Combined with the existing Creekside, Wells Fargo, and OSI soft buildings, San Leandro, for the first time ever, will have a high-rise commercial office district, all within an easy walk of our downtown and access to public transportation. San Leandro is the center of all. Just ask 21st Amendment Brewery. They're a renowned craft brewer that is bringing its beer production back to California by investing over $20 million in the old Kellogg's facility here. When complete, 21st Amendment will be one of the largest brewers in the Bay Area, 
creating 100 new jobs, and also offering a full service restaurant. With Drake's Brewery and the Claude Pasquale Brewing Company, which will open in San Leandro in a few months, San Leandro will be a center of high quality craft beer production in the Bay Area. This will give us a regional draw and a local pizzazz. Such business clusters accelerate investment and draw visitors. And let's not forget Taipei Machines moved to San Leandro from their space in San Francisco to build the 3D printers in the new gate development. The gate is the top floor of the old Chrysler manufacturing facility, above the Home Depot and Sports Authority and the Westgate Center. By repurposing 35,000 square feet for designers, artists, entrepreneurs, and makers, the gate is becoming its own tech ecosystem offering an alternative for businesses that would otherwise look to grow and expand in Silicon Valley or San Francisco. Because of our premium location and tremendous transportation infrastructure, Preferred Freezer is also moving to San Leandro on the long vacant Hudson Council <coughs> site. They will furnish their 240,000 uh, square foot building this summer a major investment that will create over 60 jobs and a stronger tax base for our schools and city. The San Francisco Bay Shoreline at San Leandro boasts an extremely attractive location for once a generation type development. The federal government no longer provides funds for the dredging of recreational harbors, making the cost of dredging the main harbor by the city itself cost prohibitive. As a result, we just look to new alternatives and partnerships. For the past seven years, we have done that and are fortunate to have Cal Coast as a committed partner. The environmental review of the project has commenced and will be complete later this year. There will be ample opportunities for public input as we review and modify, if necessary, the draft plan. All this public outreach is designed for one purpose, to ensure that the final product reflects the views of our community and is an environmentally sustainable development. The San Leandro Boulevard project, which connects our downtown to the San Leandro Bar Station in a pedestrian-inspired manner, will be finished soon. Downtown property owners have also banded together with the city to form a community benefit district that will harness downtown investment in the form of security, marketing, events, and maintenance. All these efforts align with our welcoming business climate and world-class transportation infrastructure including two bar stations, freeways, rail, and proximity to three major airports. We boost shuttle service that will soon be expanded. The Lynx shuttle is now working with Kaiser Permanente to bring workers, visitors, and patients from San Leandro Bar Station through our city to the Kaiser facility. Our business friendly approach to investment from the business tax holidays for new businesses until 2015 to our plans for the next generation workplace district adjacent to the Kaiser Hospital are generating investment and more momentum, as well as media coverage. Let's watch a recent news report on San Leandro. Thank you. to lure new companies. So the strategy is really quite simple, and it appears to be paying off big time for San Leandro. Gate News Katie Yudas talks with those benefiting from the city waiving fees to set up shop. CEO of Taipei Machines, Esther Cyberston, is eager to show us inside his new space. We build new machines here in San Leandro, and uh, from scratch. His employees construct and distribute 3D printers. Originally based in San Francisco, Taipei Machines needed room to grow. We went from 4 to 18 people last year. This year I hope to hire 40 more people. So that means that we need the space to expand. But obviously because we're a startup, we can't just buy that space outright. And San Leandro's mayor, Stephen Cassidy, was eager to accommodate. There's a lot of industrial space that could be used for a much higher purpose. And they were going, come here, come here, because this is where it's happening. 
to lure companies. The city is waiving the business license fee for 2014 and started doing so in September. And we've had over 135 businesses that have come into San Leandro since we started the program. For small businesses, this means around $300 in savings. We're a startup, so for, for us, the, the, the monetary concern, like every dollar counts right now. Larger companies can save thousands. The brewery, 21st Amendment, plans to take over this industrial building along William Street and will benefit from the business license holiday. The city is taking an initial hit. So far, more than $38,000 is foregone because of the licensing holiday. But Mayor Cassidy says the program will pay off. And there's a tremendous amount of venture capital that's flowing into San Francisco, the Silicon Valley, and we're trying to siphon off some of it to come here. From manufacturing automotive parts to 3D printing, like this bracelet, the warehouse on Davis Street has evolved. But only time will tell if the mayor's investment in the future pays off. In San Leandro, Katie Udis, KTVU, Channel 2 News. Well, that's part of the fun part of the mayor's job. <laughs> I also want to note that the Bayfair Mall has made major improvements, including a renovated Macy's. Our retail sector is thriving with the addition of Ben Mode and beautifully renovated Orchard Supply Harbor store. Tax revenue from growing sales at our auto dealers is contributing greatly to the city's budget, and we are grateful for and proud of the success of our auto dealers. As San Leandro moves forward, we're constantly mindful of community safety and public health. This year, the City Council and I voted to support the continued funding of 90 police officers in our budget. This includes allocating funds for five police officer positions that were previously paid through a federal grant that expired. Our police department continues to refine its analysis of crime patterns to deploy officers to focus on most likely areas of crime for each day and time period. Last year, Chief Sandra Spagnoli created a crime suppression task force that has been effective in reducing neighborhood crime. For the past seven months, both robberies and burglaries have been lower each month than compared to the same period of the previous year. The recent progress in reducing burglaries has been dramatic. Burglaries are down over 40% in January and February this year compared to January and February of 2013. The use of new technology is also a critical component of our policing. Fortunately, our department has embraced this trend through the implementation of various cutting-edge tools, including a new smartphone app, license plate reader cameras, and the Nexo notification system. Community members now have the ability to communicate with the police through text messaging via our text-to-tip program. The, the police department continues to expand its outreach to the community through its United for Safety campaign and programs like the Annual Open House, National Night Out, and Teen and Adult Academies, helping educate San Leandrans on crime prevention and obtaining feedback on its performance and responsiveness. The department also places a high priority on ensuring the community is prepared for emergencies through frequent trainings and simulations. On March 18th, our police department hosted a youth town hall meeting at the library at which local youth got together to share ideas with the police about how the police department can better serve the community. Looking ahead, the San Diego Police Department will continue to hold similar meetings, and we encourage community members and their children to join us in these discussions. In an urban and diverse city such as San Diego, it's vital that the police proactively engage and listen to the entire community. Our police department excels in this work, which is fundamental to maintaining and reinforcing the trust between the community and police. Without such trust, crime thrives. We all need to act as the eyes and ears of our police department. This is how we ultimately keep San Leandro safe. Just as important as our efforts in the realm of public safety are our efforts to enhance public health. These efforts will be further enhanced with the opening of the new Kaiser Hospital in June, as well as maintaining our valuable partnership with San Leandro Hospital. Thanks to the leadership of Supervisor Wilma Chan and the support of my city council colleagues, we have kept San Leandro Hospital open and assisted its transfer to the Alameda Health System. Civic pride takes many forms, and it's enhanced by our wonderful parks and best-of-the-class library system. 
We are also proud of the fact that San Diego is noted as one of the most diverse communities in California. We honor this diversity through a number of programs, including our Big B program, cultural events, and educational partnerships. Our civic pride is also showcased by many programs and special events that occur throughout the year, including the Farmer's Market, Sausage and Suds, Martin Luther King Jr. Oratory Contest, Cinco de Mile Celebration, and our Lunar Moon Festival. One key missing event in recent years has been the Cherry Festival. I'm proud to say that with real community support, including over $50,000 from businesses and nonprofits, that come May 31st, rain or shine, probably just shine, we will have the 105th Cherry Festival. Um, the festival will include everything from Radio Disney, a parade, entertainment from Rhythm and Blue Stars Tony Tony Tony, to the good old-fashioned cherry pie baking contest. Um, historic preservation is also an indicator of civic pride. This year, we are proud to be partners with the Altamira Club in their ongoing effort to preserve their magnificent property. After being temporarily halted, tours are now running through the San Leandro History Museum, following its reopening the past fall. There's also a new focus on creating a constant art and culture environment in San Leandro. Indeed, this past November, we held our first ever Arts and Culture Town Hall, which was well attended by many of the people that are here tonight, and provided a great forum to collect ideas of the community and ways to enhance the artistic and cultural life of San Leandro. I'm also exploring the creation of an arts commission that would help guide us in these efforts. Looking to the net, head to the next month, the library will be hosting a Celebration of Cultures event on April 17th, which will showcase an array of live performances. In April, city staff will also be presenting revenue ideas to fund art and culture in San Leandro. The art and culture nourishes our souls and brings our cities alive. What also nourishes ourselves is food trucks. And from food trucks to holiday lighting to beautifying our utility boxes, we are on the road to making San Leandro a dynamic place. Our many parks and green spaces have been upgraded significantly. The Oakland A's believe that San Leandro is a special place and provided a $50,000 grant to improve Stencil Park. The East Bay Regional Parks District, working with Measure WW funds, and the city have greatly improved Molina Park. Our partnership with the American Golf Corporation resulted in a $500,000 improvement to the driving range. San Leandro, as I noted before, is one of the most diverse communities in California and the entire nation. We celebrate our diversity and honor the many cultures of San, that San Diego is held from through a number of programs, including our big read programs, cultural events, and educational partnerships. Community investment is a program that the City Council adopted this year to help with neighborhoods, enhance businesses, and provide assistance to nonprofits that assist those struggling economically. We see the need in our community and are doing more to help our partners that work daily with programs for the needy, abused, elderly, and troubled. Affordable housing is also a priority, as demonstrated by the City Council's recent approval of the 200-unit Cornerstone project, including $9 million contribution in redevelopment set-aside funds. This will be the first apartment complex in San Diego designed to primarily serve larger families, with the majority of its units being two and three bedrooms. Once completed, the project will provide needed affordable workplace rental housing and will be the first major residential development under the city's acclaimed downtown transit-oriented development strategy. Another important investment in our community comes in the form of social services assistance. In order to help the homeless and at-risk population, the city continues to provide annual contributions to important local service providers such as Davis Street Family Resource Center and Building Futures with Women and Children. The City Council approved the allocation of $150,000 in community investment funds to supplement both organizations along with other vital social service providers for working families, the elderly, victims of domestic violence, and the homeless. Cities are only as strong as their public schools. We are committed partners to the San Leandro Education family. I welcome and look forward to continued work with our new superintendents of schools, Dr. Mike McLaughlin of San Leandro, and Fred Grill of San Lorenzo. With the support of Supervisor Roland Chan, this year we will celebrate the opening of the San Leandro Health and Wellness Center in the old girls' building across from San Leandro High School. 
To facilitate this, the City Council supported a $1.2 million loan to the district to acquire the building. The promise of Burrell Field is honored and is now open to the community. Our plans to assist both districts with their technology needs are progressing. We want San Leandro students to be able to take advantage of the latest technologies and for our schools to distinguish themselves by becoming known as the fastest connected schools in the nation. That's why we're working to connect with San Leandro to our schools. Now let me talk about some of our challenges. Momentum is certainly visible, but we have areas that need attention. First, we must have a robust public discussion on Measure Z. Fiscal discipline on the part of the City Council over the past three years, with the added revenue for Measure Z, prevented cuts to vital services and has helped generate a budget surplus for the city. While Measure Z focused on presenting cuts to services, there's a pressing need to invest in the city's infrastructure, including repairing our neighborhood streets. In the coming months, we will have a discussion on extending Measure Z at a half cent rate. All money raised by this measure would be controlled locally for local services and cannot be taken by Sacramento. Our ongoing conversation with the community about this issue will include a discussion of the city fiscal health, our service levels, and condition of the infrastructure. Here's a brief report on these areas. First, our fiscal position. With the support of our labor unions and our employees, we've made significant progress in setting San Leandro on a sound fiscal foundation. This past year, we agreed to five different contracts. The contracts, pay, excuse me, the contracts provide pay increases while committing all city employees to pay their share of their retirement costs. Although we are doing much better in the short term, the situation is threatening by the end of the decade. We project growing costs that are personally attributable to increased health care and retirement liabilities will outstrip our revenues. We must continue to work with all employee groups to make their post-retirement benefits fiscally sustainable. This includes the benefits in our fire contract. This contract with Alameda County provides excellent fire emergency services, but as I noted in my 2013 State of Safe speech, the accelerated costs to provide free lifetime health care the spouse and dependence of retired firefighters threatens our fiscal sustainability. In terms of our service levels, we are working very hard with neighborhoods, business, residents, private partners, and other levels of government to make sure that our parks are maintained, libraries stay strong, public safety improves, and our health and school systems are supported. Examples include constant communication and partnership at many levels, business support and marketing are focal points, as are being proactive in our planning. Our planning includes the next generation workplace study and looking at ways to improve our communication. And improving our communication helps improve our community engagement. We strive to create an environment of citizen inclusion in local government. To that end, we are now televising city council meetings, we continue to host town halls, and we've adopted two new technology platforms to further community input and engagement. The first being next door, and the second being the virtual city hall. Our planning session was well attended earlier this year, and it presents an opportunity for the community to give us feedback directly and help shape the future of San Leandro. We are working to strengthen our communication with our non-limited English speakers. Our boards and commission also offer more opportunities for residents to interact with city hall. Finally, with respect to infrastructure, I'm pleased to report that we're close to completing the largest public works project in our city's history with the $49 million expansion of a wastewater treatment plant. Following extensive outreach with Caltrans, we've also secured the state's assistance in repaving portions of East Orchard Street, and we continue our local efforts to underground utilities in our downtown. Nevertheless, qualified experts rate San Andreas streets as among the second worst in Alameda County, and our pavement condition index has dropped from fair to at risk. If we don't repair them now, repairs will become substantially more expensive and more intrusive in the future. In other words, our pavement needs far exceed our resources, and without additional resources, our neighborhood streets will become among the worst in the East Bay. We don't want that to occur. Um, and that's why we're going to have a conversation with the community about exploring a local revenue measure that would focus in part upon repairing the worst neighborhood streets in San Leandro. Now those are some of our challenges. Let's look forward to the future. And the future of San Leandro is bright. I wholeheartedly believe that San Leandro 
is on the, the cusp of transformative change. A new spark of creative energy is flowing through San Leandro. Our residents and partners in business, labor, government are spearheading the transformation of trans San Leandro into a center of innovation in the Bay Area. It's creating quality jobs for San Leandrans and generating greater revenue for City Hall to in turn invest back in our services, our infrastructure, our neighborhoods, our nonprofits, and our schools. Location, 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 regional transportation, world class labs, world class beauty, world class higher education, world class innovation, and world class projects. That's what's happening today in San Leandro. And here are some of the great projects that I'll just recap that are happening. Of course, the San Leandro Kaiser Hospital is opening in June. It will have over 2,500, maybe close to 3,000 employees. And of course, there will be many more visitors coming each day. Then San Leandro is expanding regionally to our shoreline and to further areas of our industrial area. We're creating a craft brewing cluster in San Leandro with drinks, 21st Amendment, and Calibri Squealy. Preferred Freezer will be open later this summer. Our next generation workplace study is working to ensure that our industrial area helps meet the needs of the new innovation economy and is in line with the needs of the new Kaiser Hospital. The Village, our downtown retail development, the first downtown retail development in decades, has started construction and will be complete by the end of this year. I believe that it will be a trigger mechanism that will bring in additional investment in our downtown and that will see the empty storefronts that are there now start to become reoccupied and provide services for our community. The Davis Street and, and Marina Street 880 construction is moving ahead. It will get better. <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> Unfortunately, it's still a little more to go. We're working on the general plan update. We're undertaking the shoreline review. The Cornerstone Housing and San Diego Boulevard projects, um, are, well, the San Diego Boulevard project will be coming to completion soon. The Cornerstone Housing will be starting in this year. I'm very proud of our bike master plan, uh, which is going to add five new miles of bike lanes later this year. Um, we'll go from, we started with about 17 miles of bike lanes in 2011, and by the end of this year, we'll be well over 20 miles across our city. We have partnerships with our schools to help with, their edu help with the technology and the facilities to promote health. The Tech Campus next to San Diego Bar Station will be coming to the City Council in early April, and construction will likely start later this year. The gate is thriving with cutting-edge tech firms on the top floor and traditional retail uses on the bottom floor. By working together, we can help achieve what we know will be a bright future for San Leandro. In closing, I'd like to thank all the board members of the various commissions that are here tonight, um, the school trustees that are here, our school superintendents, our other elected officials, and then you, the residents of San Leandro. You're making such a difference in our community. <coughs> thank you for making San Leandro a wonderful place to live, work, and raise a family. Thank you for helping move San Leandro forward. We're a city on the move and the best is yet to come.